How were the students at the Enfield Tennis Academy educated in David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest? And you may think because of how everyone turns out all weird, uh, socially inept, and addicted to drugs, that they receive some very progressive and diverse education. But no, the education received at Enfield was actually the most classical of educations, and it is called the Trivium and Quadrivium quadrivi Method. And the term Trivium and Quadrivium Method were actually coined during the Carolingian Renaissance in the 8th and 9th century, but, date, but the method and system of the seven liberal arts, which are logic, grammar, rhetoric, arithmetic, music, geometry, and astronomy, date back to Plato, Aristotle, and the Greeks, and eventually got turned into, once again, in the Carolingian Renaissance, into the Trivium and Quadrivium. And the Trivium is actually the cornerstone of the classical education movement. If you think of your favorite philosopher or thinker, all the way up until the 1940s, they were probably educated in a trivium structure unless they went to like a really weird school or were self-educated. And even today, very modern people are influenced by the trivium. Marshall McLuhan, the famous soci uh, sociologist and thinker that has had a massive effect on how we perceive reality now, wrote his thesis on the trivium, was actually very into it for the entirety of his life. And people like Cormac McCarthy, who I talk about on the show, a very famous writer, he was educated in the trivium method because in the 30s and 40s, there was actually a trivium renaissance in Western education. And Wallace in the footnotes of Infinite Jest explains the trivium and quadrivium method like this, quote, not 100% clear on this, but the thrust is that the trivium and quadrivium are the two basic courses of study leading historically to the, the like 18th century equivalent of a high school diploma and a BA, or maybe MA, respectively, at nodes of hoary classicality like Oxford and Cambridge University during the time of Samuel Johnson, more or less the original grammato lexical and pedag pedagogical hard ass. And that trivium makes you take grammar, logic, and rhetoric. And then if you're still standing, you get the quadrivium of math, ge geometry, astronomy, and music. And that none of the classes, including the potentially lightweight astronomy and music, were in fact lightweight, which is po one possible reason why all the portraits of these classical and neoclassical BAs and doctors of philosophy at Oxford and Cambridge look so pale and wasted and haunted and grim. Not to mention that the only day e uh, ETAs get off classes is Sunday, partly to make up for how much they are away from the classroom on trips and back at the Enfield Tennis Academy. Classless Sunday is a three-session day on all of the courts, all of which strikes people outside the academies as all as almost fantastic, fanatically brutal, brutal. Excuse me. And when you first hear, you know, it's just grammar, logic, and rhetoric. That may seem very simple, but the arts of grammar, which you know, the art of writing and putting and, and gathering content, is very hard. The art of logic and rhetoric, you know, being able to communicate that information, are lifelong pursuits. And if you want a good introduction to how hard the trivium can be, you should read um, the Trivium by Sister Miriam Joseph. And this book is still challenging me to me today. You, I uh, went through this book about, about a year ago, and I had to reread chapters multiple times, especially in the logic section. It almost takes for granted that you are an expert at Aristotelian logic, which is the beginner basis in this book of all the other logical um, training that goes on. And this book was meant for high schoolers. Obviously, our standards have massively dwindled in terms of uh, secondary education in the United States and the Western world. But at the Enfield Tennis Academy, they did not. And their daily class structure looked like this. Enfield Tennis Academy is the only athletic-focused type school in North America that still adheres to the trivium and quadrivium of the hard-ass classical LAS tradition. 64 and thus, one of the very few extant sports academies that makes a real stab at being a genuine pre-college school and not just an iron curtainish jock factory. But Stitt never let Incandenza forget what the place was supposed to be about. And so Avril's flinty message pedagogy wasn't diluted so much as ad valorized, pragmatically focused toward the core poor POTUS type goals kids were coming up the hill to give their childhoods for. Some ETA twists Avril allowed into the classic LAS path are that the seven subjects of the trivium and quadrivium are mixed and not divided into quadrivial upper class versus trivial ephebic. That ETA geometry classes pretty much ignore the study of closed figures, excepting rectangles, to concentrate, also except for Thrope's trigonometry of cubes, which is elective and mostly aesthetic, for two increasingly brutal semesters on the involution and expansion of bare angles. 
that the quadruple requirement of astronomy has been et at ETA has become a two-term elementary optics survey. Since vision issues are obviously more germane to the game, and since all the hardware required for everything from aphotic to apochromatic lens work, work were and are right there in the lab of the communication ad tunnel. Music's been pretty much bagged. Plus, the triviumoid fetish for classical oratory has by now at ETA been converted to a wide range of history and studio courses, various types of entertainment, mostly recorded film. Okay, everyone, there is a lot to unpack there. But what's happening at Enfield is a very high-level but wonky remix of the Trivium and Quadrivium classical system curated for the odd idiosyncrasies of not just the staff, but also the tennis game, because we heard about the elementary optics, how instead of doing astronomy, they're doing elementary optics, which is talking about the laws of light and learning about the laws of light in relation, it seems like, to the game of tennis, because they only the only closed figures that they study are rectangles. And as I'm sure you know, tennis courts are rectangular. And the other math that they are doing, so they've thrown out the idea, so they're, they're studying close rectangular shapes, and they're also studying um, involution, which is a self-inverting operation that keeps returning to itself, which obviously relates to the symmetrical nature of tennis. And at deeper levels, when we're talking about bare angles, a player can create a rhythm, a symmetry of bare angles by angling their shot certain directions to then create a disruption and then uh, angle, you know, send a different excuse me, project a different angle of the tennis ball back to break the the cycle that's going on, which is, you know, just a tactic. And I'm just riffing off what I think Wallace is talking about. So if you guys have any other theories about involution and bare angles and why they're learning about closed rectangular shapes, I would love to know because obviously some of you guys are geniuses out there. But I also thought it was interesting that they threw out the oratory because a lot of this book is, is about a lack of, commu of, of communication issues, especially with the Incandenza family. Like almost all of them have massive communication issues. And a lot of the other boys in, in at Enfield do also. So they've thrown out the oratory aspect because we have logic, or excuse me, grammar, logic, and then rhetoric. And a lot of the times, trivium, the trivium method in the classical sense is fetishized into oratory because to be a lawyer, to be an entrepreneur, you know, a businessman or do whatever, you have to have great or, uh, oratory abilities. And the better you are at, the more higher you'll, you know, you know, maybe go in society. It doesn't really matter how good you can write poetry or know these things, you know, to do well. And even in politics, which, you know, the Greeks viewed as one of the highest ideals or philosophy requires you to be convincing like a Socrates. And instead, they are studying studying film because, as we obviously know, because we saw the filmography collection of James Incandenza in the footnotes of Infinite Jest, that it's a big part of the Academy. So it's very interesting that they've kind of taken this very nice system and kind of bastardized, you know, made it bastardized it to fit their ideals, but they've removed some of the most important parts. For instance, the healing power of music is gone. A lot of these boys, I think, could do well with some music, but that's almost an antithetical to playing sports because you're really letting go and moving into feeling and not being about precision because at a high level uh, at all sports, yes, you are letting go and it, reaching the flow state, but it's a high amount of control that's connected to bodily movements that could be resulted in an injury. But the guitar, you know, you're moving your fingers and you're connected in a kinesthetic, kinesthetic level there, but at a bodily level, it isn't as insane. It's really more of a mind and soul connection working as tennis is more of a mind and body connection. And all these wackos are trying to bring the soul into it, which isn't working very well. And I think this speaks to the broader point of what happens when, so classical education and these systems are there because they work and they've been tried and they've been kind of tweaked. But in education today and whatnot, it can be a little bit harder because if, let's say we have something where we have a very open school district and everyone's like, okay, uh, teach what you want. And that's great for the teachers. It's even great for the kids because people get to teach their strengths. But let's say one year you have one uh, teacher that's really into something. And then all that knowledge, though, that they learn isn't really applied or built on for the next couple of years. So then by the end, you have all this kind of fragmentary beginner knowledge but no one's really connected to it. No one has become an expert after all this time in whatever, you know, field of mathematics or writing. 
And at the end of 12 years of education, you should expect to be very proficient in it. But as we've seen now with test scores and whatnot, a lot of kids aren't proficient anymore. So that's kind of the one of the positives of the classical education movement, uh, even though it can be very restricting and somewhat whitewashed, is that it builds uh, experts at these things and gets them very college ready. And so what, do you guys, what did you guys think about the edu- education and infinite jest? What other ideas and quotes from the book do you guys remember? This is just something I stumbled upon while doing a reread, and I'm sure there's a bunch, uh, bunch more about the education that I'm missing, and I'll probably make future videos on that soon. So I will see you there. Peace.